Hello, welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is leading worship today, we welcome you. We are so excited that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today. And if this is your first time to worship with us, we are doubly excited, so glad that you are here. I want to encourage you to use our contact form. The link for that is right in the comment section and the QR code that's on your screen. Uh, please use that contact form so that we can be in contact with you. Particularly put your email address in there so that we can uh, connect with you with our e-newsletter, which has all of the information about opportunities for worship and faith growth and love and service and all of those things. And then there's also a place on the contact form for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please use, do, do use that contact form today. I also want to remind you that when we come together for worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. We covenant together to participate because this doesn't, isn't just this kind of random worship video that you're watching. This is worship of God and worship with one another, with a community. So we want you to participate. Turn off other distractions and devices. Maybe light a candle if that helps you to focus. And then fully participate in what's going on. When it's time to sing, then sing. When it's time to pray, then pray. Uh, pay attention to all the things and just be a part of that covenant with us to participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that all the ways that we're together, the way we're in the comment section, the way we may be gathered with people wherever it is that we are, the way we're sending this worship out into the world, that all of it is a blessing to everyone who is participating and everyone that is touched by it. Today we're continuing in worship with our Sharing God's Gifts, Prayer, Worship, Thanksgiving, and Generosity series, so we're very excited you're here for that. And we're also having our celebration of all saints, when we remember and give thanks for all of the saints in our lives, those who've come before, those who are saints right now, and those who will come in the future. Welcome to worship. Please join us in singing Mighty to Save. Forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior. 
save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave Shine your light and let the whole world see We're singing for the glory of the risen King Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see We're singing for the glory of the risen King Savior, He can move the mountains my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave good morning I'm Lori Payne Mullet. I serve on the SPRC and the board of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Please join me in the spirit of prayer as I offer our opening prayer. Almighty God, you create, redeem, and sustain us in every moment of our lives. In you, we place our trust. When we face illness, conflict, and fear, you are our steadfast protector. When we suffer setbacks and loss, you restore us through your love. When our lives prosper and we are comfortable, you move us to share our blessings with others. In times of hardship and plenty, you alone are the source of life that really is life. Holy God, in love and trust, we offer ourselves to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say peace be with you and respond and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with the folks in our community. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Richard Parrish. I sing in the choir, sing tenor. Peace be with you. Good morning. My name is Mike Frakes. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Peace be with you. Good morning. I'm Janet Schmidt, and this is my granddaughter, Kennedy. Kennedy has helped us record music. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hey kids, it's time for small talk. I want to encourage all the children who are with us in online worship to get in really close to your device or to your screen so that you can see and hear absolutely everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, who is our director of children and youth ministries and Laud the Lamb, who is her special assistant. So let's get ready right now for Small Talk. Hello, it is October 31st. I am Miss Lori, and this is, this is Laud the Lamb. He's dressed up for the day today, and his helper Cohen, and Cohen has a little bit of a situation going on here so it's Halloween and it's fun on Halloween to have disguises and disguise yourselves and play pretend it's a really good time Laud is a squirrel today and Cohen is clearly being abducted by an alien right so and I'll be something later right now I think I'm I'm a mom that's what I am I'm a mom right Laud yeah, but we can put on the disguises and play pretend, but God still knows exactly who you are inside and out, even with your disguises on. He knows who you are and loves every part of you. So remember that this Halloween, that as funny as you make yourself look, God still knows who you are and he loves you. Have a fun day, guys. Bye. Please join us in singing 
faith while trees are still in blossom. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joe Johnson. I'm co-chair of the Missions Committee alongside my lovely and intelligent wife, Rebecca, and we've been a part of this faith community here at Douglas since 2016. Now, what initially pulled us in and has remained with us since then has been the ongoing engagement of Douglas with our local community. The very first experience we had at Douglas was going to a Wouldn't It Be Lovely sale on a sunny morning back in 2016 that left us both happy with our furniture and impressed by the lively feeling of this church on a brick street in Springfield. And we wanted to explore it further. In the time since then, we've had the chance to get to know many, many interesting and faithful people. People who choose to invest significant parts of their days trying to make a difference in the lives of those around them and worship God. As you all know, a week in the life at Douglas is always a full plate, from events related to Wouldn't It Be Lovely and Compass, to other things like our recent vaccine clinic or United Methodist Women Gatherings. Douglas is also a community where I feel like I have the space to engage in a journey of faith that includes curiosity and questioning, and that that's something that has room made for it here. For Becca and myself, Douglas has been a place where practices of loving God and loving neighbor have felt connected. And that's why I'm glad to have the opportunity to join in this community with, as our congregational vows state, my prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. I want generosity to be a significant part of my character. And by giving regularly into the life of this community, my hope is that I am living into this direction. Thank you for your time. Peace be with you. And have a good morning. Hello, my name is Curtis Brown, and I help to work with our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church Youth Group. And I also help to organize our Sunday morning greeters for in-person worship. Our reading from the Bible today is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, and verses 6 through 15. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of King Zedekiah of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadrezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah was confined in the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judah, where King Zedekiah of Judah had confined him. Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of your uncle Shalom, is going to come to you and say, Buy my field that is at Anatoth, for the right of redemption by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Hanamel came to me in the court of the guard, in accordance with the word of the Lord, and said to me, Buy my field that is in Anatoth, in the land of Benjamin, for the right of possession and redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. 
And I bought the field at Anatoth for my cousin Hanamel and weighed out the money to him, 17 shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sealed deed of purchase containing the names and the conditions and the open copy, and I gave the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Neriah, son of Messiah, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, in the presence of the witnesses who signed the deed of purchase, and in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting in the court of the guard. In their presence, I charged Baruch, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, both the sealed deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthenware jar, in order that they may last a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Today with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, we are continuing in our worship, prayer, and generosity series, Sharing God's Gifts. During Sharing God's Gifts, we are first and foremost encouraging you to commit to pray regularly about, by thanking God for the gifts in your life, by asking God's guidance on how to use these gifts, and to listen for God's direction and follow God's direction for your life. To support you in this commitment, we invite you to use our prayer commitment cards. You may have received one of these in the mail. And we also have our online prayer commitment card that you can all use in solidarity with your church family. The link for that online prayer commitment card is right in the comment section. We're collecting all of these prayer commitments together as an offering of prayer. And we're actually placing them in, these, in this basket right here, and we're placing them on the altar here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I also encourage you to participate in sharing God's gifts in the community by supporting our vaccination clinics, trunk or treat, or the clothing drive with Du Bois Elementary School. And we would also love to send you one of our gifts of gratitude, this nifty window cling. It looks like this. You can place this in your car window or other window as a way to celebrate and share about Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. You may have already received all of these things, prayer cards and window clings in the mail. It's also all available through our DAUMC e-newsletter or just contact the church office and we'll get you more information and certainly send you one of those window clings. Today in worship, we are also celebrating All Saints Day, which is November 1st. Each year, this is a special time to give thanks to God for the saints of our lives, believers who are alive, the church right now, but also those who have come before us in the faith and even those who are to come. All of these make up the communion of saints, that great cloud of witnesses that is described in Hebrews 12, that surround us and cheer us on. On All Saints, we especially remember and give thanks for those in our church family who have died in the previous year. And we give thanks and celebrate those who have supported and influenced our faith, those who have invested love, faith, hope, and resources in us. I invite you right now to take a moment to reflect on those saints in your life. I know that I am eternally grateful for the great cloud of witnesses that have invested faith, love, hope, money, resources in me. I remember the hope of my great-grandparents, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, and my parents. I give thanks for my husband, my children, my brother, and my in-laws, all who in our relationships together invest love, time, and resources in me and I in them. I remember church families stretching from Austin, Texas, to Shreveport, Louisiana, to Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine, Washington State, and now in Illinois. There are special Sunday school teachers and teachers, mentors in my faith, in music, and in ministry. I hope that you are recalling right now some of those that make up the great cloud of witnesses that encourages and invests in you. 
If you'd like, feel free to put the names of those saints in the comment section. And we'll have a special time of thanksgiving and remembrance with our parade of saints in just a few minutes to celebrate all of them. Being invested in is a powerful thing. It's a sign of hope, of encouragement, of belief in the future. Investment empowers, gives strength, and is a tangible sign of who and what we value and believe in. Our reading from the Bible that Curtis shared with us today is all about investment. It's from the prophet Jeremiah, found in chapter 32. And like much of our Bible, it is important to understand the context of what is going on in our Bible reading to help us grasp the meaning and let it into our hearts. At this point in the story of the prophet Jeremiah, the capital city of Jerusalem is under siege from the Babylonian Empire. The prophet Jeremiah has spoken against the puppet king, Zedekiah, and this has landed Jeremiah in jail again. Now, the prophet Jeremiah was an upper-class, trained religious leader of the Jewish people in the line of priests from the north, from Israel. At a young age, Jeremiah had received his call from God to speak God's word to the people and religious and political leaders. Jeremiah consistently prophesied against abuses in worship at the Jewish temple, where the Babylonian worship of Baal had become the royal religion of Jerusalem. He consistently preached the need to turn back to obedience to God's commands found in the covenant of Moses, to turn away from idolatry and toward God. And the word that came to Jeremiah concerning the Babylonians was to not fight them and rebel so that national destruction could be avoided. At this point, the Babylonians had already conquered and exiled the Jewish people to Babylon following a first rebel rebellion some years earlier. King Zedekiah, however, was not listening to Jeremiah. And ten years after the first conquering of Jerusalem and exile, King Zedekiah was at it again, saying, Jerusalem will always stand. I'm the king at the capital city. We're going to rebel against the Babylonians. God does what I tell God to do, so I'm going to do what I want to do, and God will follow me. The prophet Jeremiah basically said, uh, no. We need to do what God is leading us to do, and war is not it. So Jeremiah lands in jail, and the Babylonians lay siege to the capital city of Jerusalem again. While Jeremiah is in jail, a curious thing happens. His cousin comes with an offer to Jeremiah to buy some family land in their hometown of Anatoth. But this isn't just a random friendly offer made by a family member to invest in a piece of family property. Jeremiah's cousin is basically liquidating assets and getting out of town. Listen, the Babylonians were awful and everyone knew it. They would come in and burn everything, kill, rape, pillage. In a feat of 6th century BCE destructive terroristic engineering, they would put pig carcasses under the city walls, and as those carcasses would rot, gases would build up and then explode, collapsing those walls. They would leave pyramids of skulls as a warning to anyone who crossed their path. Really terrible things are on the way through the hands of the Babylonians, and everybody knew it. Jeremiah knew these things too. And I imagine he was faced with a dilemma when his cousin comes with this offer to buy the family land in Anatoth. Do I use the bail money to get out of jail and get out of town? Or do I use the bail money to buy this land? The word from God comes to Jeremiah, and it is this. Buy the land, Jeremiah by the field at Anatoth. And Jeremiah does. Jeremiah is faithful to God's word and God's direction. 
He buys the land, and not in secret either. Jeremiah follows all of the proper legal procedures in the presence of the jailers and the court of the guards, making sure the paperwork is signed in duplicate and sealed up so it will last a very long time. And sure enough, the Babylonians do conquer in horrible fashion, destroy the temple in Jerusalem, uh, defile the land on which it stood, and take the people's leaders, the rich and powerful, into exile. Jeremiah, however, manages to stay behind in the desolation that has been wrought and helps rebuild. He does the direct opposite of his cousin who liquidates and gets out. Jeremiah follows God's direction, buys the field, and he stays in the midst of the people left behind in the ruins. Why? Why does Jeremiah do this really kind of crazy thing? taking his bail money and making a very poor investment by uh, all accounts in land that is about to be destroyed by the conquering Babylonians. Why? Because Jeremiah believes God and God has a different understanding of what makes for a good investment. God tells Jeremiah and God tells us because life will return again to this land. Life to the people, homes, fields, vineyards, ministry, people. Life will return again to the people. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 and onward, God declares a new covenant to be made with his people. In verse 33, God tells us, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. It's not the land that is a really good investment. It's, at, it's that the people are the best investment of all time. God invests in people. God invests in people with gifts, abilities, courage, perseverance, resources beyond our imagining. God invests in people and in the future, not just what we can see right now or even what we might be able to see into the next generation. God invests in us and into the future unabashedly and faithfully and powerfully. God invests in hope, and hope is always the best investment of all because with hope we can change every circumstance. And God calls us to do the same to invest these gifts God has given us, our time, our money, our talents, our service, to invest it in unabashed, daring, faithful, hopeful ministries right here with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in this community with the people that are here all around us in this place. We do that ministry together by first and foremost partnering with the Holy Spirit to invest in people, to shape and form people who love and follow Jesus so that they are loving and following Jesus at all times and in all places and in all situations. We invest in our church facilities, which support these life-changing ministries of people hoping, people healing, and people transforming. We invest in our leadership to discern and support vision and faith into the future so that we are a part of God's purposes and kingdom now and continuing. Like Jeremiah, Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, we, us, we are not here by accident. We are here on purpose created by God as the body of Christ to believe what God tells us, to follow God's lead, and to invest as God invests. I have a friend, Pastor Thomas from Ghana, who says, between the promise and the power is prayer. We follow God into God's kind of inspired investing because of our relationship with God in prayer. So please join with us in our commitment to prayer during this season of sharing God's gifts. Join in solidarity with our DAUMC family by offering that prayer card. And as you go to use that prayer card link today, please join with me now in prayer. Loving God, thank you for investing gifts, hope, 
resources, love, and purpose in your people, in us. Thank you for this gift of prayer as a way to grow our relationship with you, to share with you, to hear from you, and to act on the ways you are calling us in generosity and service. Please bless our commitments to pray that we make during this season of sharing God's gifts. Bless our prayers. Help us to pray, loving God, to trust you, to believe you, and to follow you in all your ways of love, investment, mercy, generosity, and service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join with me in this time of prayer and I remind you that our contact form has a special place where you can put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. We love to pray with you so please use that contact form. You can put prayer requests right in the comment section. There'll be time for you to do that during this time of prayer as well. But please now open your hearts and your minds and your spirits and join with me in prayer. God of all the saints, in all times and all places, we thank you for this time to pray to you and with one another. As you call us to be your saints in the world, we ask for your Holy Spirit to breathe life into us, that life that only you can give. We long to be your holy people, a praying people, a serving people, people who are prepared to give ourselves to you and to your work of love and justice in the world. God of all creation, we are humbled that you call us to be stewards of your creation. We pray for world leaders who are gathering in these weeks for the UN Climate Change Conference. Send your Holy Spirit to inspire them to embrace the changes needed to foster a more sustainable society. Give them courage and gentleness to implement fairer solutions for the poorest and most vulnerable and to commit our nations to the care of our common home. God of compassion, bring healing and peace to the nations in conflict where there is political instability and where COVID-19 rages through the population. Protect those who are poor and hungry and bring your hope. Move those with plenty to share with those who have little and help all people to love their neighbor as themselves. In this moment of silence, please offer to God a place or situation on your mind, and you can place that in the comment section. God of healing, we pray for all who are suffering in pain, sickness, anxiety, or depression, who are grieving and all struggling with addiction. May they feel your arms of healing, love, comfort, and compassion surrounding and holding them close and help us 
to be people who bring your healing love, comfort, and compassion. In this moment of silence, please offer to God anyone on your mind, and you can offer those in the comment section. God of communities, we thank you for the saints who have helped us on our journeys of faith, encouraged us when we felt like giving us up, taught us our faith, invested in us, and gave their lives working for a better world, following in the example of Jesus Christ. We pray for our community here, our neighborhood, for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, for those who lead, and for the many ministries with which you have gifted us. We thank you for a very successful vaccination clinic on October 24th and lift up the preparations for the next clinic on November 13. We pray for trunk or treat, that this may be a joyous and safe celebration full of connections and making new friends. We pray for this season of sharing God's gifts, that we may respond in generous thanksgiving and giving. We pray for our continued learning, understanding, and the hard work of being anti-racist and working to dismantle white supremacy and systemic racism. We pray for Wouldn't It Be Lovely, Compass for Kids, Du Bois Elementary School, Fifth Street Renaissance, and all of the many ministries and ministry partners you have given us. In this moment of silence, please offer to God any ministry on your mind or place those in the comment section. God of salvation, we thank you most especially for your Son, Jesus Christ, who has shown us your love, your way, your compassion, your justice, and your mercy with all of his life, his death, and with resurrection life. And so we offer all of these prayers to you, praying together as Jesus taught us to pray. Please join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. We're so glad you joined us today at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We'd like to thank you for your dedicated support of the programs and ministries of our church. This afternoon, we're going to have another wonderful outreach event, our annual Trunk or Treat. This is a big Douglas Avenue tradition. This event helps us to know our neighbors and gives them an opportunity to come meet us as well. I hope we will see you there. Our next vaccine clinic will occur on Saturday, November 13th from 1 to 5 p.m. Be watching for more information and the opportunity to sign up to help as details become finalized. Of course, we are currently involved in our Sharing God's Gifts campaign, a time of prayer, worship, thankfulness, commitment, and celebration. You should have received a DAUMC window cling in the mail with your program materials. I hope you have placed it in a car window or another prominent place. Your giving to DAUMC is changing lives in our community. We have tried to make it easy to give and the many ways to give are listed on your screen. Remember, if you have questions, just call the church office. Jesse is always happy to help. Thank you again for all you do for Douglas Avenue. Now, let's return to worship. Join me in singing Forward Through the Ages. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We just pray that this whole experience has been wonderful for you, has been powerful, has been meaningful and uplifting, and that you will join with us again for online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30. We love you and love to pray with you. So please remember to use that contact form to put your contact in information there so we can connect with you. But also remember that there's that place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that the God who invests in you it's calling you to invest in others. Know that Jesus loves you completely and entirely and that the Holy Spirit goes with you to strengthen you and empower you, to comfort you and to lead you along the way. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Mm -hmm.